Thomas Alive to Die presents Bird Imes. After a winter freeze destroyed his citrus crop in 1895, retired Confederate Army General William Burdime turned his attention to the dry goods retail business. He opened a small store in Central Florida and in 1898 he and his son moved the operation to Miami then a small fishing village that had just received its first railroad line and incorporated as a city. When Burdime opened William Burdime and son in Miami the town had a population of less than 1,200. Funded with $300 capital and housed in a 1250-square-foot building at Avenue D and 12th Street now Miami Avenue and Flagler Street the dry goods store resembled a frontier trading post Burdime and Son offered a limited selection of shoes, clothing, fabrics and sewing notions, lace curtains, table linens and umbrellas. Burdime catered to local construction workers, soldiers and natives from the Mikasuki and Seminole tribes who bought foods with money obtained from the sale of alligator and otter skins. The city of Miami and Burdime and Son matured together during the early 1900s. The store's product offering expanded and by 1912 the store had evolved into a full-scale department store with all of the modern merchandise available in large northern cities. During this time Miami had become a luxury resort destination for wealthy northerners escaping the cold winters and Burdime and Son configured itself to meet the needs of this clientele. Ronnie Burdime who became manager of the store after his father's death in 1911 shaped Burdime and Son into a fashion-savvy store with an identity that reflected its tropical location. He coined the name Sunshine Fashions in reference to the clothing styles, colors and fabrics appropriate to Miami's warm climate and casual atmosphere. Burdime and Son stocked high-quality European clothing in the latest fashions and began to display them in fashion shows in 1914. Excellent customer service became a hallmark of the store as Burdime awarded bonuses to employees at every level. Burdime and Son became the largest volume retailer south of Washington, D.C. and east of New Orleans earning Roddy Burdime the moniker Merchant Prince of Miami. Burdime and Son attained a reputation in northern states as a fashionable place to shop and dine. The company advertised the store in national magazines urging potential customers to travel with empty trunks that could be filled with merchandise found only at Burdime and Son. One advertising slogan referred to Florida as the place where summer spends the winter. Because the store offered warm weather clothing all year long Burdime and Son proved to be an excellent test market for manufacturers lines of spring and summer clothing before delivery to department stores in northern states. The company simplified its name to Burdimes Incorporated in conjunction with the first public sale of stock in November 1925. Proceeds from the stock offering were used to fund expansion and as working capital. During the 1920s Miami experienced an economic boom and Burdimes found it necessary to expand the store by then a six-story 138,000 square foot structure. A six-story addition provided another 70,000 square feet of retail space. Burdimes opened new stores in West Palm Beach in 1925 and in Miami Beach in 1928. As a promotional device Burdimes launched a radio show in 1928 hosted by Enid Burr. In addition to presenting fashion news and guides to shopping at Burdimes the show provided household hints and played classical music. In promoting Burdimes as a prominent Florida store Roddy Burdime commissioned an exclusive fabric design called Moon Over Miami for the popular song of the same name available only as clothing sold at the store. In 1936 the year Roddy Burdime died at the age of 49 company sales reached $5.6 million earning net profit of $500,000. Burdimes struggled through the Great Depression but expanded again during the 1940s. The company closed the West Palm Beach store during the 1930s but opened a store at another location in that city in 1941. Burdimes also opened its fourth store in the growing city of Fort Lauderdale. Capitalizing on the patronage of wealthy Latin American tourists the company launched a mail-order catalog to serve customers in Latin American countries. Customers included American military personnel stationed in Cuba who sent a supply ship to Miami every six months to place and fill orders at Burdimes. The company developed a team board to consult on clothing selection ensuring that store merchandise appealed to a new generation of shoppers. 
In 1950 sales reached $27.8 million garnering net profit of $1.1 million. During the early 1950s Bertheims experienced financial difficulties which constricted cash flow and would lead to its sale to federated department stores. By November of each year the company's credit line was exhausted forcing buyers to hold orders until after the Christmas shopping season. In summer 1954 Bertheims refinanced debt with a 20-year $5.5 million loan and arranged for a sale and lease back of a new store in West Palm Beach. The situation worsened however as competition from a new Jordan Marsh store diminished Burdheim's prevailing market share. Jordan Marsh offered shoppers an elegant new shopping environment while the buying power of the parent company Allied allowed the store to stock a wider selection of merchandise. After several years of resisting Federated's offers to acquire Burdheim's in 1956 the company accepted. A stock swap valued at $18.5 million completed a merger in May. The second largest department store group after Allied Federated provided capital investment which significantly improved the merchandise mix at Bertheims and enabled Bertheims to expand with new stores. Operating in one of the fastest growing areas in the nation during the 1960s Federated located new Bertheims department stores with demographic growth projections in mind. For instance the company opened two stores in Hialeah a sparsely populated area northwest of Miami. Bertheims acquired 100 to 200 acre parcels of land and sold the land surrounding the stores to mall developers. Thus the two stores in Hialeah eventually became part of shopping centers specifically Dadeland Mall and Westland Mall and residential development followed commercial development. In 1971 the Dadeland Mall store became the largest volume suburban department store south of New York City. Bertheims expanded throughout the state of Florida initially in the greater Miami area. During the late 1970s the company expanded outside of southeast Florida for the first time. New stores opened in Orlando and the Tampa Bay area the latter including Sarasota St. Petersburg and Clearwater and Tampa. New stores opened during the early 1980s included locations in Daytona Beach and Gainesville. Bertheims opened stores in Fort Myers in southwest Florida and Melbourne along the central Atlantic coast. Locations in near Miami in southeast Florida included Boca Raton, Hollywood and Cutter Ridge. In 1984 Bertheims opened a specialty store at the fashionable Mayfair shops in Miami's Coconut Grove neighborhood selling men and women's fashions and accessories cosmetics and consumer electronics. Between 1977 and 1985 Bertheims expanded its chain from 14 stores to 29 stores ranging in size from 50,000 square feet to more than 200,000 square feet. In 1985 sales reached $757.5 million. Bertheims refined its image as it grew during the 1970s and 1980s. As population growth in Florida attracted other department store chains to the state Bertheims developed the Florida strategy to differentiate the company from the competition. Identified as the Florida Store, Bertheims highlighted the unique product offerings attributable to its experience and knowledge of Florida's tropical climate. When competing department stores from northern states offer dark colors and winter clothing Bertheims stock merchandise suitable to Florida weather. Winter merchandise included shorts, bathing suits, cotton sweaters and linen clothing but few winter coats. Bertheims' attention to demographics also extended to the needs of individual stores. Buyers selected merchandise in styles appropriate to the Palm Beach socialite or the Midwesterner living on the Gulf Coast depending on the location of the store. Bertheims provided an extended line of junior clothing for college students in the Gainesville area and petite-sized clothing for the Hispanic customers and Latin American tourists at the Dadeland store. As hip-hop style clothing became popular in the 1990s the North Miami store served the African-American community with designer clothing from Carl Connie. Bertheims designed store interiors to fit the tropical atmosphere of Florida as well as the location of the store. Designer Kenneth Walker applied tropical hues such as coral turquoise and white as well as beachside motifs such as the ocean dolphins and palm trees. In Gainesville home of the University of Florida columns around the escalators resembled the school's alligator mascot. The Mayfair store in upscale coconut grove exuded elegance with mirrored ceilings marble flooring and columns in lacquered pastel colors. The stores featured atriums and skylights or ceilings painted sky blue with clouds. 
plaster palm trees became an informal trademark of the company's identity as the Florida store. Officials at Bert Imes considered expanding to nearby states or Puerto Rico during this time but ultimately decided to limit expansion to Florida so as not to dilute the Bert Imes brand identity. While new store expansion continued in the mid-1980s, growth came to halt in 1988 when Campo Corporation acquired Federated through a leveraged buyout. The high level of debt forced Federated and Allied acquired by Campo in 1986 into Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1990. In the course of bankruptcy proceedings Federated and Allied merged. Federated closed four stores and sold 17 stores mostly Jordan Marsh and Moss Brothers stores previously owned by Allied. This eliminated stores with low profits as well as direct competition as most stores were sold to mid-range department store chains such as Mervyn's Montgomery Ward and J.C. Penney. Another 17 Jordan Marsh and Moss Brothers stores were merged with Bert Himes. When Federated emerged from bankruptcy Bert Himes thrived as a streamlined company of 44 stores with profit margins at 12% compared to 8% in 1986. Sales had declined under Campo's ownership attributed to lower quality lower priced merchandise meant to stimulate cash flow through high sales turnover. Bert Himes revamped its product offerings and sales surpassed $1 billion in 1992. The Daedlin store alone garnered $30 million in profits. Bert Himes' attention returned to growth and expansion during the early 1990s. A new department store opened in Pembroke Pines in 1992 and the company launched a new store concept Bert Himes Home Gallery. These stores offered furniture home accessories fine china silverware glassware housewares electronics gifts and floor coverings. In addition to small home stores in November 1993 Bert Himes opened a 215,000 square foot home furnishings store in a building once occupied by Jordan Marsh at Daedlin Mall. Home merchandise was relocated from the Bert Himes department store at Daedlin to the home gallery allowing the department store to double its clothing line. Bert Himes then added significantly to the home furnishings line to fill the large new store. The Bert Himes home gallery offered an extensive line of high-quality home merchandise on three floors. The glassware selection featured crystal designed by Johnny Versace and Paloma Picasso and the store dedicated an entire room to Waterford Crystal. Electronics included the Oster line of 1950s retro-style kitchen appliances. Bert Himes promoted the home gallery through 60 full-page advertisements on television billboards and in certain regional editions of the Miami Herald. Direct mail advertising to Bert Himes charge card customers involved a 44-page catalog. The store's bridal registry alone required a staff of 15. In 1994 Federated purchased Macy's department stores raising questions about the possibility of changing Bert Himes to the Macy's brand. In May 1996 Federated issued catalogs that were essentially the same since both chains offered much of the same merchandise Federated saved the expense of advertising by offering the same catalog with the different brand names on the cover. Bert Himes became Federated's most profitable division during the 1990s even more profitable than Macy's and Bloomingdale's. Questions about a possible name change faded for the time being as Bert Himes continued to expand as the Florida store. Bert Himes experienced major growth expanding into seven new locations and significantly renovating their existing stores with a lighter color palette and an upgraded decor. The most publicly anticipated stores that opened during this period were those located in expansions of the Florida Mall in Orlando and Aventura Mall in Aventura while other stores opened with new shopping malls such as Citrus Park Town Center and Citrus Park and the Mall at Wellington Green in Wellington. During this period Bert Himes also tried another new layout at their store in St. Petersburg's Tyrone Square Mall in an attempt to improve convenience for shoppers. The store upgraded to use a central checkout system and was expected to be more popular among shoppers since they would only need to see a cashier once before leaving. However the design failed as an employee had to manually apply a coded sticker to the price tag of each item before customers left the store. Thus this convenience plan was quickly abandoned by Bert Himes and the company resumed using traditional cashier layouts. In May 2003 Federated announced plans to convert Bert Himes to the Macy's nameplate. Beginning in February 2004 Bert Himes 56 stores would operate under the name Bert Himes Macy's. 
Seven Macy's stores in Florida operated under the dual name as well. At a later date the stores would be switched to the Macy's name. Since Macy's and Bertheim's maintained several stores at the same malls industry specialists speculated that Federated would close some stores or convert them to home furnishing stores. The former flagship store in Miami built in stages from the 1910s through the 1930s continued to operate as a Macy's until it was closed in March 2018. Ross Stores leased the building in 2019 and are redeveloping it to relocate a nearby store whose building was set to be demolished in favor of a 92-story skyscraper. The redevelopment will permit a second store to be located on the first floor of the building. The new store will open on March 7, 2020. Berdine's Memorial Day Weekend Mattress Sale, where all mattresses are 50% off. Plus, take an additional 10% off sale prices now through Monday. Every style and size is on sale. Every Sealy, every Serta, every Simmons, every Stearns and Foster. Every mattress 50% off. Plus, take an additional 10% off, but only through Monday. The Memorial Day Weekend Mattress Sale at Berdine's. We deliver. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.